In this video, we're going to look at differentiation, specifically increasing and decreasing functions. In this video's description, you can find some exam questions to try afterwards. Let's imagine we had a function, and we drew its graph, and it looked like this. We're going to mark on the leftmost point of this function that we can see, which is this one here, and then slowly increase the x value. If we increase the x value, this point will just move from the left to the right. As we do this, we want to consider what happens to the y values, though. So let's see. In this first section here, as we move to the right, the y value increases. After we go over this bit, it decreases. Then it begins to increase again, decrease once more, and then finally in this last section, it begins to increase again. So we could split this function into different sections. The black sections here, where the function is increasing, and the red sections where the function is decreasing. Now if we draw a tangent in one of the black sections, it will always be sloping upwards, therefore it has a positive gradient. If it has a positive gradient, then the gradient function, dy by dx, must be positive as well, so it must be greater than zero. In the red section, however, if we draw a tangent, it will be sloping downwards, so it has a negative gradient, in which case dy by dx, the gradient function, must be less than zero. This leads us to be able to make two statements about functions. If dy by dx is positive, the function is increasing. If dy by dx is negative, then the function is decreasing. Let's have a look at how we can apply this to questions. Here we have a function, and we're asked to show that it's increasing for all values of x. If it is increasing, then dy by dx must be greater than zero. So let's work that out. So dy by dx, we do three times a third, which is just one, and then reduce the power of x cubed down to x squared, so it's just x squared. If we differentiate negative x squared, we get negative two x, and if we differentiate plus 2x, we get plus 2. So we found dy by dx, and we need to show that this is always positive. To show something's always positive, or indeed always negative, the easiest way is to complete the square. So we'll complete the square on this. So this is equal to a bracket squared. Inside the bracket, we need to half the coefficient of x. At the moment, it's negative 2, so we'll stick a negative 1 in here. We then square that negative 1, which gets you 1, but then subtract it, so subtract 1, and then bring this plus two down, and the negative one plus two will give you plus one. Now it's in this form, we can actually show that it's always positive. This first bit here is just the bracket squared. So whatever number of x we substitute in here, this must be greater than or equal to zero, since square numbers can't be negative. Even if x was a negative number, for example, negative five, we'd get negative five take away one, which is negative six, and then you square that and it becomes positive. So this can't be less than zero. So the lowest value this bracket squared could be is zero, and then we're going to add one to that. So the lowest value dy by dx could be is one. So dy by dx is greater than or equal to one. And one of course is greater than zero, in which case f of x is increasing. For this question, we have another function and we're asked to find the values for which f of x is a decreasing function. If f of x is decreasing, then we know that dy by dx is less than zero. So let's work out dy by dx. Three times three is nine and reduce the power from x cubed to x squared, so nine x squared. And then do two times negative nine, so negative 18 and reduce the power from x squared to just x, so negative 18 x. Now this time we need to actually find the x values for which it is decreasing. So we want the gradient function to be less than zero. So let's write nine x squared minus 18 x is less than zero. Now we end up with a quadratic inequality that we need to solve. We can factorize the left hand side. If you factorize nine X out, you get nine X and then X take away two, which is less than zero. This gives us two critical values. The nine X will give us a critical value of X equals zero and the X take away two gives a critical value of X equals two. So if we drew the graph of this, it would cross at zero and two and it's a quadratic. So we'll get that classic U shape we want to know when this graph gives a value less than zero. This corresponds to the section where we're below the x-axis, since that's less than zero. The x values that keep us below the axis are in between zero and two. So we found the solution to this inequality. It's x is in between zero and two. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Remember there are some exam questions in the video's description. 
check the video I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.